You wake up from a sleeping chamber in an empty, ominous space station. You think you're alone, and you know something is wrong. This is the story of We Went Back. This is Ghost Hunter Reviews. I'd like to start off by addressing everything We Went Back did good, because they did a lot here. We're going to be talking about the story and other details, so please, if you don't want any spoilers, skip to this point on screen. First, this is a free passion project from Dead Thread Games, so this isn't supposed to be a AAA title with a huge amount of detail. The story can take anywhere from 20 minutes to about 50 minutes depending on if you're rushing through it or you're taking your time to appreciate the little details Dead Thread Games put into the environment. Speaking of the environment, this is a small spaceship with a secret little cubby office room where you figure out just how to escape. The rooms change and at one point it's crazy red and there's cockroaches everywhere. My favorite part was the astronauts when they were looking at you. It was very, very creepy. I really enjoy the story, so here's a recap. You wake up from a sleeping chamber and you're trying to put all these pieces together. What happened here? Are you alone? Immediately, the game tells you that you need a password to get off the ship, so that's your end goal. So dangling in front of your face is the first alien symbol you'll need to complete the password, which is not hidden and serves as a good tutorial of what we're trying to do to get all these symbols. You'll, you'll end up finding a secret office room and find out that you'll need a few more symbols. And you know what's nice is when they appear in the room, they'll actually have a yellow glow stick next to them so you're not stumbling around in the dark spamming E. Periodically, you'll be rerouted to where you spawn in, and periodically, you'll have a giant weird monster in your face or jump scaring you. You solve a words for friends puzzle and you're out. You know, the game was never made to be this gigantic, intricate twist or have a, a, a ton of depth. It's just a fun game to experience and move on. I thought the sound in the game was fantastic. At the end of each time loop cycle thing, I could hear the monster and it made me want to get out. It was kind of rushing me. You know, I thought the monster sounds were good, you know, when it was standing in front of you. And I loved, absolutely loved that creepy music when you found all the pieces, all those symbols, and then that music started to pop off. It was, it was such an old, old time creepy sounding music. The graphics were good. You know, this isn't some AAA title, but I was really impressed. It was a dynamic environment, it always held my attention, and I never felt that it was poorly done without love. And the monster, I mean, look at this thing. I really enjoyed it. And the worst part was the sound. I think if it didn't have the sounds, it wouldn't have really pulled off what the game was trying to do. I mean, not too much to say about the monster. You know, when it was in front of me, I wasn't too scared. But those jump scares and whenever it was making those crazy sounds, I think that's when it's going to get you. Speaking of jump scares, there's about three good ones that I noticed. The first one is when the monster breaks the vent and kind of grabs at you. This is a decent one because we're not really expecting it. The second was more expected, you know, when the monster is really just standing in front of you and then jumps at you. Lastly, which I don't think happens every time, but if you actually ignore that creepy old-timey music at the end and then just com just complete the cycle, he'll jump down from the vent above and kill you. This got me and definitely was my favorite jump scare. The ending. It's a good one. You know, you're left wondering if you died from the smoke and this is just some time loop, but you know the code at the end, or maybe someone rescues you and puts up a fire, uh, but my money is on the first one where it's some weird time loop and you actually just know the password and you get out. To preface, we, we don't hit hard on free games. As such, we're going to go over a few opportunities where they could have improved. I liked how there were little help signs on the mirrors, etc, but it would have been cool to have maybe a few or even two pieces of paper with some story on it. Look, I love ambiguity as well, but for the hardcore lore lovers, they could have thrown them a bone. Uh, what I mean is, some people are going to play this game and absolutely love it. If this is a passion project to create this game, 
maybe drop some story papers towards the end that kind of sheds light on who you are, why you're doing this, where you are in space, maybe where the monster came from, maybe you're noticing a time loop or something. I think that could have been a great opportunity. The last thing I want to touch on here is the way they make the loops. I thought at times you could bypass the loop by collecting the alien symbols before looping. It worked with the hand, but not with the last one. I loved when I figured out that I need to, needed to collect something in these rooms and that they're next to the yellow glow stick and you know, it keeps repeating over and over again and, and then you figure it out. But after the first one, I almost felt punished. Like I had to run through the same room like 15 times just to hit the exit door and finish the loop. Probably this was the best workaround without writing code that triggers the exit door to spawn, uh, which is fine because it's a free game, or it's an indie game, or whatever you want to call it. Um, just would have been nice, is all. You know, the reason it's a bad note is because I love the story so much, I wanted to get back into it. Discover, you know, not just running around the whole time looking for an exit door, which just has me run through the same room 15 times in a row. When we conclude a game, we want to make sure we state our believed goal for the game. For we went back, we think the developers were going for a short, wonderful experience that you'll really enjoy. Does we went back complete its goal? Yes. Where the only negatives are those that take you away from the awesome story, you've got yourself a good game here. If your goal is to have a short, wonderful experience, you're gonna enjoy this game. Regarding the goal that Dead Thread Games set out to do, we're giving this game a 9 out of 10. Again, this isn't being compared to a AAA or any other game, it's just a rating on what it is, what it's trying to accomplish. So for the everyday person, we recommend to play it. We think you're really gonna enjoy this experience. For the tough guy, you're probably not gonna get scared from this game and your best bet is to stick with a AAA title that has a lot of depth and a lot of ability to scare you if that's your goal. You can pass on this one. And lastly, for the hardcore people, this game doesn't have the depth or lore you're looking for. You should probably pass on this one too. If you like short scary games, you should play it. It was a lot of fun, I highly recommend it, and thank you Dead Thread Games for creating a fun passion project for us to enjoy. Hey everyone, this was Ghost Hunter Reviews. We really appreciate you guys stopping by. This was our first review. Our goal is to start reviewing uh, the, the Demonologist. Uh, it's the Ed and Lorraine Warren story, and we're really excited about it because we're going back to our paranormal roots. But, you know, a lot of these games, whether they're scary, they always have an element of the paranormal or maybe even cryptology with aliens and, you know, that kind of regard. So we wanted to touch on this game. We know at first it almost just came out and we're actually playing it on Saturday so we hope you look forward to that for the scary game Saturday and above all we really appreciate you watching this video and we appreciate your support have a fantastic Friday